What's going on guys? My name is Will Dillingham and I am here at Inertial Labs testing facility to bring you another tutorial video. Today we're going to be going through the INSD graphical user interface and we're going to show you some of the key settings so that when you're configuring your device you know how to set it up properly. Now in today's tutorial video we're not going to take the time to show you how to set up the device so if you need help configuring your device with the computer please click on the video in the description below. Once the user has connected the device to the host computer, they're going to want to make their way to the graphical user interface, which is located on the USB drive that is supplied with the unit. Once you have opened the graphical user interface, go ahead and open the test options window and make your way to the serial port option and select the serial port that the host computer has assigned to the device. After that, next to baud rate, go ahead and click auto where the host computer will automatically detect the baud rate that the unit has been configured to. Next, go ahead and select the output data format that you would like to use. In this case, I'll leave it on OPVT and then click OK. Next, you're going to want to make your way to devices options. In this window, the user will have the ability to configure specific settings for the unit itself. The test options window gives the user the ability to configure test settings that pertain uh, specifically to the GUI itself. The devices options window are settings that pertain specifically to the unit itself. So once you have opened the devices options window, the first uh, setting that you want to pay attention to to make sure that you configure properly is the alignment angles setting. Traditionally, an inertial navigation system would be mounted onto the carrier platform or the vehicle with the Y-axis pointed towards the front of the vehicle. What the alignment angles feature gives the user the ability to do is mount the inertial navigation system in any orientation that they deem as long as they enter in properly the offsets of those different alignment angles such that the inertial navigation system can make sure that it accurately provides orientation data and navigation data for the carrier object that it is mounted to. The first alignment angle that is entered in is the heading offset. The value that is entered here is the angular offset of the device's longitudinal axis compared to the desired reference longitudinal axis, which is typically the carrier's longitudinal axis. A clockwise rotation of the device is entered in as a positive heading alignment angle. The second alignment angle is the pitch offset. The value that is entered here is the angular offset of the device's longitudinal y-axis compared to the desired reference lateral plane. Typically this is the xy plane of the carrier object. A device rotation in the upward direction is entered in as a positive pitch alignment angle inside the graphic user interface. The third alignment angle is the roll offset. The value that is entered here is the angular offset of the device's lateral x-axis compared to the desired reference lateral plane. Again, this is typically the XY plane of the carrier object. A rotation of the device's lateral axis in the downward direction is entered in as a positive roll angle in the graphical user interface. Another set of important settings are going to be entering in the antenna positions uh, relative to the device's IMU. Uh, you are going to enter in two values for the INSD. If you have an INSP or an INSB, which only utilize a single antenna, you would only have to enter in the primary antenna position. Uh, but since we today are using the dual antenna uh, version of the inertial navigation system, we're going to want to make sure that we enter in the primary antenna position relative to the IMU and the secondary antenna position relative to the IMU. The user does have the ability to choose between entering in the second antenna position as a uh, position vector in the right forward and up positions or alternatively as two orientation angles alpha and beta. The primary antenna position is entered in as three distance measurements measuring from the device's accelerometer mass center to the center of the antenna. These measurements are entered in the following order right, forward, and up. These are the positive directions of measurement from the device's reference location and orientation. 
As mentioned, with a secondary antenna, you can measure the antenna position in the same way, entering in the right, forward, and up positions, or alternatively, you can enter in the secondary antenna position as antenna baseline angles alpha and beta. Alpha is the angle of measurement determining the secondary antenna's angular offset in the device's lateral plane, measuring off of the device's longitudinal axis as the reference. In a similar manner, Beta is the angle of inclination determining the secondary antenna's angular offset in pitch. This is measured by using the device's lateral, that's the XY plane, as the reference and comparing this to the inclination angle of the secondary antenna in relationship to the primary antenna. Some other key settings here are going to be the auto start feature. If the user plans on um, desiring to start up the device uh, and begin automatically outputting a data format, they would need to click this drop-down window here and select from the list of available data formats the uh, output data format that they would like to automatically configure the device to start in. I would like to note that if the user plans on using the graphical user interface to record data, they would have to configure it into auto start here to make sure that the device is configured into auto start mode. And then also in the test options window, if they plan on recording data inside the graphical user interface, they would need to make sure that they also check this allow auto start checkbox here as well. After the user has configured these key settings, go ahead and click the OK button at the bottom and the graphical user interface will display an information message indicating that, to the user that the parameters were successfully loaded onto the device. The last set of key settings are located inside the correction options. These specifically do pertain to an INS that is being used on a ground vehicle. This is a fixed axis ground vehicle. The tunnel guide feature allows for increased navigation performance in a GPS denied environment. So just make sure that this checkbox here indicated by tunnel guide is selected if you plan on using the INS on a fixed axis land vehicle and you are in a GPS denied environment. Once you have ensured that is selected, go ahead and click OK. Thank you so much for watching today's tutorial video. If you found it helpful, go ahead and like, comment, let us know, and feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel if there are any suggestions for any other tutorial videos that we can prepare for you to better assist you as a customer, feel free to email support at inertialabs.com to let us know. Thank you and have a great day.